Okay, welcome back. You're continuing to listen to the second hour of the Portland Hops Report. I'm Al Portland. I have one of my favorite people in the world with me right now. Murph the Smurf, Bill Murphy. I have known Bill for, what's it been, now, 10 years? Yeah, about 10. It's been a long time. I have been a staunch supporter of his organization, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATA, uh, for a long, long time. I had the privilege of speaking at one of his conferences in Washington, D.C. That was fun. I'll tell you, Murph is the kind of guy that you either love him, and that's assuming you have intelligence, or you hate it because you think he's crazy. And I'm finding that most people who disagree with him really aren't all that right. I mean, gold manipulation is a relatively obvious phenomenon. Yeah, and it's been honestly, it's, I don't know what's the big deal is about in terms of understanding it. I mean, what was the gold pool all about? 1961 to 68. I mean, that's that's when they eight central banks would rig the gold price openly. It's been going on forever, and there's all kinds of documents to show how it, it, important it is for them to manage the price. Exactly. Now, I want you to explain one thing to our listeners, Bill. Why is it important for them to manage the price? Them being central bankers, the government, etc. Why do you feel that's important? Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, we just uh, received a WikiLeaks document which was released for the, was sent from the Beijing Embassy to the State Department in which they said that this is the Chinese government. That's what was the reason that this was sent. Yeah. They said that the U.S. is suppressing the gold price to protect the dollar. They don't want people running the gold to compete against the dollar, dollar as, a, as a currency. And so that's how it all started and has but, to do with interest rates and so on. But don't you think don't you think that is happening already? I mean, that's my whole premise on my show, Bill, as I tell people, look, you want a safe haven, US dollar isn't the place to be. You want to be in precious metals. But that's the whole point. They're just trying to no, manage they're that, trying yeah. to manage the price rise. That's why gold's been up eleven years in a row. They're running out of enough cent to bank gold to do it. But on a day to day basis, using derivatives and, and gathering some physical, they can bomb the market, terrorize the speculators, force them out of the market, and then we go back up again. We've it's again eleven years in a row and yeah. it'll probably be twelve and thirteen. You know, I asked you a question. We were we were doing uh, we were involved in a debate down in San Francisco four or five years ago, and I had the privilege of moderating that debate. And I remember I said, Murph, I got a question for you. Why should these thousands of people out here buying who are listening to what you're saying? Why should they buy gold if the price of the commodity is 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 rigged anyway? And your response was, It's because again, there it's it's a managed retreat. They don't have enough gold to meet. Go, the demand, which is surging all over the world and getting bigger and bigger. Even back then, central banks were selling. Now they stopped or they're buying. It's an explosion waiting to happen. All the gold cartel is doing, U.S. government, some other central banks, some bullion banks, they're just trying to keep the price from having too much excitement. A perfect example of what just happened. Gold gets killed, it should have gone up. Yeah, what they call the Muppets on CNBC say, look at gold, it's not a safe haven. It should be going up on a day like this and it's dropping. And that's exactly what this gold cartel wants to affect uh, on investors. Unfortunately, around the world, the in, in, Chinese, Indians, they just say thank you very much. The price comes down and they buy it. Same with silver. Well, I think that anybody with any intelligence right now, all they have to do is look at what the Asians are doing. The Chinese, we talked about this at your conference three or four years ago. The Chinese are encouraging, the Chinese government is encouraging their citizens to invest in gold and silver. And they started doing that three, four years ago. That's right. And it's, it's, it's only going to be more so as different exchanges are building in Hong Kong and uh, in different places in Asia. And it's just, it's just going to become more a part of the uh, Chinese investment psyche, whatever you want to call it. Let's switch over to silver. Do you mind? No, I love Got silver. a question for you. Yeah, I do too. I have a question for you. A, a, a newsletter writer who I do not know by the name of Cliff Doak is saying, you're going to see $20 silver before you see an, an increase in the price of silver. I went on record when he said that a couple of weeks ago and said, uh-uh, no way. What do you think? Well, I would be shocked uh, if that happens. I know a year ago at this conference, the price was 23 And quite frankly, a week I said there was going to be some surprises coming. And in six months, they said the price would be 30 to 40 It went to 49 Right. <laughs> Because we understand the dynamics, and that's what an Eric Sprott talks about, where there's really a physical shortage out there. It's being disguised. So I don't think that they can keep the price down here very long, and I suspect by the next year's conference it'll be well over 60 bucks. Well, you know, my buddy Trader Raj, Roger Wiegand, is, is, he's, he's calling for 62. Uh, the only thing I can say is I quit buying silver when it hit 14 bucks, and I'm very happy. 
I'm very, very happy. And, you know, it was funny, Bill, because at the time, listeners were saying, you're crazy. And they started shorting. I bought it for 14. They started shorting it. One guy clapped his hands, you know, wrote in, clapped his hands, big grin on his face, and he said, I shorted it. I covered my short at 12. I made a bunch of money. My comment to him was, you don't see the long term, do you? Most people don't, and they don't understand uh, how bullish the fundamentals really are. I mean, you can easily going to see silver over $100 an ounce, and even now, so it's 30 bucks. What's that? T t uh, more than a 200% gain? What's the Dow done for the past 10 years? Nothing. What do you get in uh, in, uh, in in the interest rate markets? Nothing. Uh, and, and that's the point. People say gold and silver. Well, we can't do it because it's too volatile. What, what gold going up 11 years in a row is too volatile? Yes, you, but you, the idea is to understand that what. We call it living on planet Gata. We know that the gold cartel attacks. We know what they're doing now. It's not going to stand because they don't have the physical to keep it up. So you wait for these bums to attack and you buy the dip. And that's what you're doing. Of that's course. That's what we've tell, been telling people to do for you 10 know, years. You know, what I find to be really interesting is, is you've got some real heavyweight folks on your side. You know, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about Eric Sprott, we're talking about James Turk, we're talking about my buddy John Embry, my fellow Husky buddy, John Embry. We're talking about virtually everybody, and then, but, but yet on the other side, you've got some people who should be bullish on the commodity, and they're just the opposite. I don't want to give any names, but you know who I'm talking about. I, I, I don't, don't get it. Well, uh, all I know is we just had a conference in London in August. Uh, nearly 400 people, 38 countries. We had, in addition to the people you mentioned, we're there. We had the uh, uh, Mr. Silver of Mexico, Hugo Salinas Price, Mr. Gold of South Africa, this person, that person, the whistleblower, Andrew McGuire. I mean, the, the people we have on our side that are articulate and know what they're talking about is formidable. I find it to be amazing. I mean, there is nobody who is, in my opinion, better informed, more articulate, aside from maybe Bill Murphy, than James Turk. You know, and, and he can state very succinctly, in a very short period of time, why it makes sense to buy gold. James incredible. I mean, he can give a 40-minute speech without looking at a note. And he's been one of God's biggest supporters, honestly, since our inception in 1999. And he's never wavered. The most important thing for listeners is to, when you know what we know, you know what's going to happen. We've been right for a decade. We understand that they're losing control, that they don't have the physical. We know what they do, and that's the advantage of knowing what God knows. Okay, and there you have it. I want to give you guys just a piece of advice, and this is not investment advice. This is nothing more than Al Corlin's opinion. Number one, go to Bill's website, lametropolecafe.com. It's a great website some absolutely wonderful material on there. If you're interested in precious metals, and you wouldn't be watching this if you weren't, let me tell you, you're going to learn more on La Metropole, almost as much as you learn on the kereport.com. He's just been doing it longer. Murph, thanks so much, buddy. Thank you, Al.